I just want to share some lessons of what we've tried and what we failed at, what we've found to be successful and what we found to be ultra successful in the first 10 minutes of a B2B webinar. This is really going to inform your B2B webinar strategy if you want an alternative to just the endless cycle of trying to book sales calls and getting unqualified prospects onto those calls because what it's allowed us to do is to land lots of qualified sales calls who have experienced me or if it's you doing it you for 45 minutes to 60 minutes with an excellent stick rate what's the stick rate the percentage of people staying until the end and seeing the pitch so yesterday we did one we had 28 people on and at the end we had 26 people from that 26 people we booked six calls we usually close at around 47 percent we do this week week in week out and it's all because of what i'm about to share that we do at the beginning in the first 10 minutes of the webinar it's not actually about the pitch because a lot of people are like well how do i pitch how do i pitch well the pitch is actually the entirety of the webinar and in order to get people to experience the entirety of the webinar which is usually 60 minutes by the way they need to not disappear at the beginning and go Ooh, this isn't for me so here's what you need to do the first thing you need to do is actually before it starts so it's not even the first 10 minutes is first of all choose your time we we recommend one o'clock Eastern for a webinar aimed at people who run a business who are working in a business if you're targeting people in a salary job maybe six or seven at night start the webinar at the top of the hour so we start at the top of the hour meaning one o'clock and at 12 45 you want to send the last reminder text message and email actually we send one at 12 45 and 12 58 to an email and sms and when people come on you will see people come on and you'll st i use zoom webinar you can zo use zoom rooms it doesn't really matter i like the control of zoom webinar i see people jump on and i immediately share my screen to a 15 minute testimonial reel why do i do this i've watched all the great speakers Tony Robbins, Joe Dispenza, someone I love, and all the great rock bands, they don't warm up the audience for themselves, do they? They don't go out there and go, oh, we're coming on soon, get excited. They get someone else to warm the audience up, someone else who warms the audience up and really builds up the authority of the speaker so that when they come on, they already have the room. I don't want to go on that, that, that begin the webinar when I don't have the room. I want to have the room before I go on and start the webinar. So what we do, 15 minutes of testimonials, we just put a little graphic at the, the, the bottom that the live training will commence shortly will begin shortly it doesn't really matter what over three and a half years we've maybe had five or six people complain about that the vast majority of people are cool they'll watch it they'll experience it and then so when you go on at the top of the hour you've already pre-framed what do I mean by pre-framed you've set up a certain type of focus for you you've built your authority and the way they see you is very different to as opposed to the situation where they hadn't seen the testimonials they've seen 15 minutes of client testimonials and then you go on to talk you through the, the talk through the webinar you've already got the floor now the second thing I do and this really 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 makes a difference these two things are worth it alone alone is when that's playing in the background I can see everyone jump on so I can see their name on zoom so I'm immediately on my phone <coughs> at the desk and I'll see the name go on and I will go to um, LinkedIn I'll go to LinkedIn type in their name look what they do I'll put a piece of paper with a line down the middle on one side of the, the line will be their name on the other side will be what exactly what they do so then when I go on the top of the hour I'm not hi how's everybody doing introduce yourself I'm like hi Joe I saw that you're sales director at name business hi Marie I see you do ex executive coaching hi Ariana I see that you do this great profile I know exactly who they are and do you know how many people do this on webinars I don't know but I do know that people are very surprised and shocked and there's a correlation between me naming them having researched them and taking like five minutes and the people that book calls and that really really sets up the support gets the interaction going because by the way the more they interact with you the more they will book calls and the more they will buy because ultimately what we want everyone's always talking about no like and trust everyone's talking about authentic communication without actually quantifying how to get to that point point. and what we found to work on webinars it is real real life communication is, is two way it's not someone speaking at somebody like school teacher pupil relationship lecturer student relationship it's two way real time communication and that really sets it going so that's the second thing the third thing is as soon as you go on you want to make sure they know you're live and, and by the way we are live 
And I know everybody's time is valuable. This is really important. Everything you do in this webinar needs to build your authority, not destroy your authority. You need to hold a frame. What does hold a frame mean? You don't pander. You don't you don't go into becoming a shrinking violet. You have to have authority over the room in order for people to put calls. And how do we do that? Well, look, everybody's time is valuable. I want to thank everyone for coming live. I want to make sure that this training today is tailored to what you want to see. So would you, I'm just gonna ask three quick questions. And by the way, when you ask these three quick, quick questions, they give you the presentation. They provide the context for you to layer in their particular problems, their particular situations, their particular feelings, emotions, sticking points, what they feel stuck on, what they're trying to do more of, what they're trying to do less of, what they want from life, what's their emotions, where do they want to be in five years, all comes in these three questions. You'll obviously have a structure, the structure is the foundation, but then you kind of fill up the structure with what they tell you in these questions. Because why would you go live and then not ask them what they do, and then tell, ask them what they want to see, and then give them what they want to see, and then you, you, you've already got the great pitch, and it informs the pitch. So the three questions I ask are this. First of all, what do you do and who do you sell to? And I'll, I'll do it like this. So first question what do you who, what do you do please put in the chat what you do and by the way sh this is great to share with it's great networking opportunities too because I'm eliciting and I'll reference to what I've already looked at in the introduction on the LinkedIn profiles fantastic and I'll do the names and if I'm not sure on pronunciation I'll make sure that, that, that I ask for approval and ask that I've done it wrong we, we want to create a safe space where people feel respected where there's a good energy where people feel comfortable to interact and more than anything you want to get people going in that chat because that's where you put the link to book a call at the end so it, it all kind of compounds and do that so that's the first question second question what do you want to get from this training what is it you want to do more of what is it you want to do less of and the third question will be what's it about for you why are you here and, and running a business? Because I've just seen in the chat, you do this, this, and this. Reference what you say, reference what they've just told you. Why do you get out of bed every day and do this? And then from these three questions, I know exactly what they do, so I'll understand their problems. I know in depth what they specifically want from the training, and I will understand what they want from the next five to 10 years of life and what motivates them at a deeper level beyond the appointments and the money and so on and so forth. So in other words, I already have everything I need to deliver this webinar in a way that's gonna be valuable to them. So then you don't go and spoil it on the next slide. You go on these webinars and they're like, this is for you if, and then you have a bullet. You are, you are, you are. Don't do that, right? Everyone's done that. Here it is in a crux. If people feel that they're seeing a repeat of something they've seen before, and if you put exactly the same slide up that everyone puts up on, on a webinar, they're immediately gonna take their memory back to that experience, and they're going to, whether you like it or not, ex associate you with that experience. You're on a webinar, you're doing the same slide, the same structure that they've seen a lot of times before that they probably didn't enjoy. You need to be different, you need to stand out. So here's what we do. It's important that in the first two minutes of the webinar, they you outline their problem, better than they understand the problem themselves because a lot of the evidence says if you can describe somebody's problem they automatically assume you have the solution but i don't do that through a bullet point this is for you if visuals because you want a visual of their problem you don't want bullet points of the problem so here's what we do we just go through this this we, we speak to a lot of people that you're experiencing this in the dms this and this now that's just three bullets that says not three bullets, that's just three images that says they're getting a lot of pushback in the DMs. Cold messages are not working for them. I could have put a slide for you. But what I like to do is really, really bring that emotion home and immediately we've, we've visually represented that problem and they know they're in the right place. Now the next thing you need to do is, is really, really important. Immediately after that, you need to make a promise. So the way we make the promise is like this. I'll just show you what's the alternative to cold messaging, cold email, cold calling, ask for sales calls and messages. Now in the world of copywriting, the world of direct response marketing, the way of the, the, the world of offer development and the great books like Eugene Swartz wrote a great book, I'll link it below. They talk about matching your promise to the level of market awareness. That's just a very posh way of saying you need to have an original promise. The promise needs to be transformational, not incremental. They need to really feel immediately that you're going to present something that is a new way of doing things as opposed to what they're doing now. If you're unable to make that promise in that slide, then it's really going to be difficult for you. The reason that ours is doing so well and has done so well is we are not ever asking for 
sales calls in messaging. So I'm making a promise that is different than the competition. I'm making a promise that is transformational, not incremental. What would an example of an incremental promise be? I'm a leadership coach that does better leadership coaching. I'm a LinkedIn lead genera generation expert that helps you send better messages. That's incremental. Transformation is I stop you sending messages to book sales calls because that's what everybody else is doing and that's really important. That's when I'll tell them exactly what we're going to cover. And just a quick pro tip on this slide, what you want to do on this slide is you want to make sure you really emphasize the third point. They're all important, don't say one of them is not important than the others, but by the way, the third point, people often get the most value from this because, because you're always looking to seed, what do I mean by seed? To open loops, what do I mean by open loops? to give a bit of the information say we'll cover that later and that's exactly what I want to do on the third and by the way on the third point we cover this and it's going to be really interesting for you if you're doing this so make sure you stay for that point and there you go in the first 10 minutes you will have got the room you will have got authority you'll have spoken to people on an emotional level you've spoken to people on a logical level you'll have covered statistics they'll have given you the pitch they'll have literally given you the content that you need to cover and you will be rock and roll to build a great webinar. I'm gonna link here to some other trainings on webinars. This is our zone of genius. This is genius how, how we built the business. And I think it's important to say, should you do webinars? I don't think that there's the, the such thing as you should do this and you should do that. Within reason, everything's going to work if you spend enough time focused on that one thing. We personally made a decision to spend three and a half years working on webinars, doing them every single week so we can get to the point where we know exactly what to say at every single stage throughout that 60 minutes. That's from our focus. And if you want to get good at them, check these because I'm just going to share everything on YouTube.